Hello, everyone. Welcome to April. Exciting news for you today. We are in the season of Aries. So I know we have a few Aries out there working, listening to this podcast, working hard, working out, doing something Aries like. We're going to find more out about you today. But first, I want to say hello to Lloyd and happy April. How are you? Fine, thank you. Happy April to you too, young lady. Couldn't wait to get this month started. This is going to be an interesting month for sure. You left us with the cliffhanger last month, so <laughs> you got some things to clear up this month about <laughs> April. But I certainly first, will. Before we even get into April, I want to ask you, how was your March? Believe it or not, normally I don't listen to what I say or what I write. But when I listened to it, believe it or not, it was right on point. I was surprised. I was really surprised, you know. Uh, it deals with home, family, relationships. It was just very, very interesting. I said, wow, so that's pretty So what made good. you decide to listen to March this time? I was trying to listen to one other sign. And then I just kept going and I said, well, let me get to my sign. I'm an Aquarius. You know, we always next to the last in the line anyway. And when I did, it was just very, very interesting now that April has come and gone. I mean, March has come and gone, excuse me. It was just very interesting. So I'm hoping that all of the Zodiac affiliates, all the Zodiac family uh, felt that theirs was right on time because that's the whole point of why we do this is try to help and guide guide those into the signs and let them know that if this is what's going on it's like a forecast it's like a weather forecast is it going to rain is it going to be sunny is it going to be cloudy is it going to be stormy you know what i'm saying should you go in should you go out stay in or go out so it's that kind of energy so when it came to now see i haven't met other aquarians that say how did your month go? Because I never asked. I just, but in my way, I'd say it was very fitting. Very fitting. You all heard what he said. He hasn't met other Aquarius that has been letting him know how the month went. So I want all of you, no matter what your sign is, to let us know in the comment section yeah. what your sign is and how things worked out for you. We love numbers. Not the kind of numbers that we talk about as far as growth in the channel, but numbers as far as data. How accurate is this for you? Let us know what your month was like. And I'll tell you about my month. And I was excited about this month because you kind of had me excited about the part saying that Leos would blow up this month. So I was kind of prepared. I knew to take it slow in the beginning and I did take it slow and I could definitely feel that Jupiter influence. So yes, I blew up. I met a lot of new contacts, a lot of new things happened for me this month. But not only that, we're talking about Jupiter here, the planet of expansion. So my appetite also blew up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing a lot of snacking this month because of that three influence. But let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. If you were a Leo, and you felt that expansion this month in that way, let me know because I don't want to feel like I'm the only weird one here. But yeah, so it's been a pretty good month. And like you said, I find myself at the end of the month wondering, you know, was everything all worth it? And I would have to say at this point, yes, it was. But we're going to get back to the cliffhanger. You said that there's going to be a lot going on that everyone should know about this year. Before we even get to that, what should we know universally about the month of April that will lead up into the cliffhanger? Numerically speaking, April will be a three universal month. The question becomes, how did I determine that? Simple. That's the beauty of numerology. That's how I got hooked on this in the first place. I took 2024, which adds up to an eight, and added to the fourth calendar month in the year 
which is April, and 4 plus 8 equals 12, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So therefore, the month of April of 2024 is a three universal month. And the word universal means everybody. Everybody, no one escapes. Now, some will be more better than others. Some will be more challenged than others. But the point is that this will be a year where every, I mean, a month for April where everybody just widens their perspective, widens their mindset, widen their horizons, widen their contacts, and it's going to be busy. There's going to be a lot of legal things because to the negative three rules, a lot of scandals. So if you find a lot of scandals are coming in the news about this or that or this person or that person or this celebrity or that celebrity, don't be surprised in the least. And then a three, because it means you can go overboard for everybody this month, try to stay you know, keep a balance. Too much haagen every night is bad as none every night. You know what I'm saying? Just just keep everything <laughs> in a balance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love my haagen ice cream too, okay? <laughs> so that's the whole point, is to keep everything in perspective. But in a three universal month for April, it means things can self-improvement, expansion, prosperity, good luck, and things of that nature. But the cosmos has thrown two curves into the month of April, okay? One of them is Mercury goes retrograde on the 1st of April, and then eight, seven days later on the 8th, it becomes a total, a total solar eclipse called a totality, which means that, and here's the interesting thing, not only is it taking place in Aries, it's taking place on a new moon day, which is the eighth, which governs the sign of Aries. And Aries is argumentative to the negative, confrontational. It is a planet associated with war and conflict and drama and argument and dangers from knives and sharp instruments. In fact, they will tell you when you buy something don't wear it in Aries, a new product, because it's likely to get torn or ripped or tear. Or you go outside and the pigeon relieve themselves on your suit or your dress. You know, all kinds of things. So, so it's going to be April under normal circumstances is one thing. But the fact that you've got two things going on, a Mercury retrograde that starts on the first and last of 21 days until about the 22nd or 23rd. And then the fact that eight days, seven days from the first, uh, uh, there's a solar total, not just a, a eclipse. There's four types of eclipse, partial, annular, uh, then lunar, then solar. There's going to be a total solar eclipse that will take place beginning at 2.27 p.m. and starting in Texas and lasting all the way through 3.33 p.m. ending in May. And so it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting time. And there's some certain do's and don'ts. So let's start with Mercury retrograde. How do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? Because <laughs> there's so much to okay. say. From mm -hmm. Mercury retrograde, what I hear a lot of people talking about during Mercury retrograde is don't sign anything new. Don't get anything new. Um, confusion. And a lot of people get scared during this time. Is this a time to be afraid? No, it's a time to be aware, which is great the way you put that. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference when it's like walking in the dark and you can't see and you're bumping in everything. And then there's a whole difference when you're walking in the same space with the light turned on, where you can see everything, where you know how to maneuver around whatever obstacles that's in your way. And what happens is Mercury retrograde simply means that when things slow down, for example, Mercury is ruled, is ruled by the planet, it's called the planet of communications. It governs anything connected with that. Mercury also rules business, science, commerce, communications, import, export, the stock exchange, the literary field. It rules the spoken word and the written word. You cannot assume when Mercury is retrograde. Mercury goes retrograde from the 1st of April till about the 23rd of April. Then there's what is called the shadow effect. 
And because Mercury rules technology, your phone acts up, the car acts up, the computers act up. I thought you said this. No, you said that. This is when people get into the most silliest of arguments and trying to figure out what were we arguing about when Mercury goes direct 21 days from the 1st of April, okay? So it, it is just kind of amazing. Um, now, contracts uh, should not be signed. There is one exception. That exception is if you've been in the works with a working out a deal and it's been months in the making and now you're coming into the closure of the deal, signing it, getting a home and stuff like that, just make sure you just check the fine print. But basically, you shouldn't get up this morning and say, you know what? I think I want to sign this deal and work out this project. I don't think it's going to go too well, to be honest with you. All right. So, but Mercury always takes, Mercury retrograde always takes place three times a year. And, the, and the, so it's, the first one is the April 1st, the very first day of this month. Then it's in August the 4th. And that's from August the 4th through the 28th. And then the last one is November the 25th. And it lasts all the way through December the 15th. All of them, if you notice, is in the sign of the fire. They're fire elements. One is in Aries, one is in Leo, and one is in Sagittarius. And the, these are the three fire signs in the zodiac. There are only three elements of each sign that governs it. So that's what it will be. And so since fire represents impulsiveness sometimes, just a proactive thing and just, you know, you leap before you look. When Mercury's retrograde, you need to look like twice before you look, leap if that's what you're going to even think about. Writing of letters, signing of contracts, uh, the, the most silliest thing. The only thing an astrologer told me one time that if you've lost something and it's taken you forever and a day to find it, when Mercury's retrograde, you can probably find that item. So for those of you who've been looking for something forever and a day, that diamond ring, that pearl necklace, or whatever the case is, more than likely, God bless you, you can find it now. <laughs> well, maybe I'll be able to find what I've been looking for now since you mentioned it. Let us pray, okay? <laughs> so now, let me talk about the retrograde. Back on March 25th, several days ago, about a week and a half ago, on Monday the 25th, there was what is called a lunar eclipse. What happens is this is when the earth gets in, in between the sun and the moon, okay? And what happens is it started around about one in the morning, but it reached, it reached its peak on at about 3 p.m., 3 a.m. in the morning of Monday, March the 25th of just last month. Because the moon rules feelings and emotions and hunches and things like that. That means things could be a little kind of like discombobulated. You know how people talk about they was into their feelings? If you talk to a nurse or a police officer or an emergency worker, they will tell you if there's a full moon over the weekend, although this wasn't, this was on a Monday, they will tell you it's going to be a real busy weekend, okay? They can all tell you. And for some reason, because it just, the moon heightens the emotion. So in the eclipse, just brings it out even more. But on the 8th, it's different. Because it, earlier in this month, on the 8th, there will be a total eclipse. Now, what's the difference? Where the earth comes between the sun and the moon, the moon in the solar eclipse becomes between the sun and the earth. Yes. And so that's what makes it different. That's what makes it special. And because the earth is going to be closer to the moon effect, or the moon is going to be closer to the earth, the shadow is going to be larger. Sometimes they're narrow shadows when the eclipse is passing, and then they're wider shadows. Back in back in August of back in August the 21st of 2017, the the, the shadow was narrower. This year, coming up on the 8th, is wider. So this is why almost at some point between 2.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, although it's going to start in Texas, which is 1.17 East, uh, Central Standard Time, but 
the, the earth, so it's almost going to give the appearance on this particular solar eclipse. There's almost going to be dust or dawn, just as almost as the sun is setting or as if the sun is about to rise. And it'll be at midday. What makes it interesting, the eclipse when it's passing through these cities that I'll name, like Arkansas and Missouri and uh, Maine and Philly, things like that. At, at that time, the eclipse will last a period of four minutes and about 23 seconds. The longest one that ever lasted about close to nine minutes was back in 753 BC on June the 15th. It lasts about seven minutes. Normally there's about four or five minutes. So when it's in your area, so like in, in Philadelphia, 90% of people living in Philadelphia can see almost 90% of total darkness, okay? But that total darkness will only last for a period of about four minutes, 23 seconds, as it's beginning to move across the, the planet, ending up in Maine. It's beautiful, okay? Now, there's some even do's and don'ts, too, you know, okay? Believe it or not. First of all, it's spiritual. What does that mean? That means that this, when the solar eclipse takes place on the 8th, that means this is a time to reflect, to rethink, to start anew, to refresh. Because don't forget, the eclipse is taking place on a new moon day, okay, in the sign of Aries. This is a time not to rush. Please don't look at the eclipse. You know, you, you're going to have some smart Alex say, man, I'll look at the eclipse. But if you wind up looking like Ray Charles or Michael Jackson, don't say we didn't have this conversation, okay? You, you know, I mean, they're very serious about that. And and if you don't believe me, go to Amazon or any other Alibaba or whatever and click in e solar eclipse glasses. They got tons of glasses. I remember when you were a kid, you used to punch holes in cardboard to look up at the, at the eclipse. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Now, you're going to have some smart outlets. Well, can I look at it through my shades, my sunglasses? That's not going to work. Can I look at it through um, equipment where they got these heavy masks on, these metal masks? No. Welders. Welders. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mercury's retrograde already. See, um, the point is that you need special glasses. And these are called eclipse glasses because if not, you will have what is called eclipse blindness. You can burn your retina. Some people will recover. Some people will never recover. So this is not a joke. You need special glasses if you're going to look to the heavens on that time between 217 and 333 Eastern Standard Time. And what these glasses are is IOS. It's like the ophthalmologist authority. They got to be certified glasses. And you'll know because the certified number will be 12312-2. See how everything is numbers? You know what I'm saying? So you got to pay attention. You can't get no fake glasses. You can't do, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do like that. You can do like that, but if, you know what I'm saying? You wind up and you trying to see why your stuff is blurry and you looking like a Venetian blind when you're looking, that's because you did it. So it can't be said. We didn't have this conversation. Don't look at the eclipse. Also, believe it or not, don't eat or drink during the eclipse too. Don't, don't also have physical activities to go to sleep during the eclipse. But it's only 68 minutes from 2.37 in the evening, I mean in the afternoon, to 3.33 in the afternoon where it starts in Texas and ends in Maine. Just don't sleep. Don't eat. What you do is you be in prayer. You be in, you know, you, 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 it's, it's like you meditate. You know, uh, you visualize, you manifest what you want. That's what you do when it's in solar eclipse. Now, I'm curious and I've got to find out why can't I eat? Now, I know there's some smart out gonna say, man, you know, it's lunch hour and I'm gonna eat. Y'all can do whatever you want to, okay? This is based upon my research. It says don't eat. I still haven't found out why you can't eat, why you can't drink. I mean, I got it, like, I got issues, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, <laughs> that's what it said. I, and I know for don't look at the eclipse, okay? Because I think the last president was standing up at the eclipse, okay? It's when the man didn't go blind. You can't, you can't fool around. You know, listen, 
if it's hard enough to stare at the sun under normal conditions without putting on your shades. See, when the eclipse comes, what it does is it just ties the corona. There's what is called a diamond eclipse. Just as the, 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 uh, the shadow begins to cover the sun around the edges, around the tip of it, it's almost like a sparkle. That's called it a diamond eclipse. That's when it's at its strongest. Now, you can be cute if you want to, but it can't be said on our interview. We did not have this conversation. That's all I'm saying to you. So those are some of the things. So what are some of the cities? Well, Arkansas, uh, Cape Ver uh, Girardeau, Missouri, uh, Venecine, Indiana, Lima and Cleveland, Ohio are going to get good views of it. Also Erie, Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, Buffalo and Niagara, New York, Quebec, Canada. And it finally ends up in Mars Hill, Maine. Those are some of the best locations. Now, Lampasa, Texas. If you go 68 miles north to Lampasa, Texas, that's when you can see everything. But wear glasses. Don't be cute. And whatnot. Oh, and somebody going to say, well, you look at a mirror. That makes it even worse. So prayer and visualize, reflect, and sit at home. Take it easy. And because Mars is a war and impulsive planet, and it's at a new moon at the same time, be careful driving. And don't be trying to drive and look up and see if you can see the thing too. That ain't going to help you either. Okay? Use common sense. That's very precious. I love that you put the spiritual part in it because that's something that I really never thought about with the eclipse. A lot of people talk about the eclipse and they talk about the energy that you may feel as an effect. But now listening to what you just said about the spiritual component of it, I will definitely make sure that that is something that I'll be doing during this eclipse. I think it's absolutely perfect to be manifesting or to be in prayer or meditation during this time where this beautiful occurrence is happening. Well, I tell you, it would be to people's advantage. And why not? It's only 68 minutes or an hour and eight minutes, okay? There's 60 minutes in a day. The whole the whole effect when it takes place on the East Coast or, or on uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time is a total of 68 minutes. So you mean one can't control themselves for 68 minutes and abstain from eating, abstain from drinking? Simple. Eat before it starts or eat afterwards. You know, right now, this time of the year for the Muslim community, it's Ramadan. So during the day, they don't eat anyway. They don't eat until nightfall, all right? So if, if the Muslims can do it all day, you mean you can't do it for 68 minutes, you know? I mean, that's all I'm saying. But, but we seem to use the art of common sense. And that seems to be unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? So yes, yeah, spiritually start anew. It's time for a reboot, reset, rethink, refresh. That's what it's about. It's like going within. So for those of you who in meditation, think about some of the things you want to do. Think about some of the things you want to manifest on purpose, whether it's about your, you know, your health, of your environment, your living space, relationships. There's so many components to think about. But take that time to reflect. Did you know that in certain states that kids are told not to go to school? Did you know in certain states... The National Guard is going to be out on the, sol the day of the solar eclipse. But it makes sense to me because it's in Aries, which is Mars, dealing with military, construction, law enforcement. And then it's falling on a new moon day in the sign of Aries, too. So the sun and the moon is going to be in the sign of Aries. So does this explain why so-called the rumor, I don't have facts for it, that uh, you can look for soldiers to be out, more policemen to be around more than anything, while kids are told not to go to school. So something is going on, but because it's in the sign of Aries, it does not surprise me. So take it easy. Don't get caught up into nobody's dramas. Don't get caught up into no arguments or confrontations and things like that. Here in New York City, just this morning I was hearing, because see, don't forget it, don't start just on the eight. You get the shadow effect. You know what I'm saying? Like, when night comes, it's just so not day and then night. It's a gradual fading 
of daylight into the night and a gradual night as it comes into the daylight. Well, the, the, somebody got stabbed today in an argument about smoking on the subway. The guy was talking about not smoking on the subway and he got stabbed in the back. But that's Aries. Aries governs knives and guns and sharp instruments and scissors and things like that. Be very mindful. Don't be in a rush. Don't drive fast. I mean, you can. But again, it can't be said that you didn't hear on Manifest on Purpose with Miss Kimball. Are we already in that shadow effect? Yes. Normally with Mercury retrograde, the shadow effects, some says a week, some says two weeks. But I know if your phone is acting up, computer's acting up, the car is acting up, where everything will appear normal. Now it's like, what is going on with my phone? Why is it acting up? Why is it, you know, you said meet me at three. I said, no, 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 Kimberly, you said meet me at four. And then we get into a beef. And then when Mercury goes direct, we're trying to figure out what we're talking over. It wasn't that serious. It's just about paying attention. And you must be very careful of the words you speak. Words have power. I was listening to a, conf a, a, a wonderful podcast by, I ain't going to name the person, talking about the power of your words. And in Mercury Retrograde, words have power. If you say, I love you, mean that thing. Don't use words like hate and jealousy and all those other negative things. Because when Mercury's retrograding, then with the solar eclipse taking place too? Oh, that's 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 like a mixture for disaster. And then the person's going to want to know, why they ain't getting no blessings by the time we come out of April going into May? It wouldn't surprise me at all. So anyway, anyway, let's get to the sign, shall we? Now, yes. because we're talking about the sun and the moon, we're going to add another component, which is the number the component of colors. If you notice, I'm wearing green for the moon and I have a yellow tie for the sun. And we're talking about the sun and the moon. And this is why we talked about the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. And in fact, when we entered the 21st century, which is 2000, what did they start saying? Going green. Isn't everything green now? Well, what does Lloyd Strayhorn have on? Green, okay? This is the moon. Anyway, there. So we're going to start with the forecast for April of 2024 for all of the zodiac signs. And we're going to add what colors they should wear as well. Okay, suggested colors. So we're going to add another component. In March, we talked about the signs and the dates of birth that can help you. Now we're going to add a color component to it too. Now, for Aries, the theme is about expansion. The theme is about enlarging yourself. So be careful for those that be picking out because your weight might expand when you might not want it to expand, okay? Three, the cycle that Aries is going through for the month of April tells me almost anything they set their minds to, they can accomplish it. Although it may not appear that way in the very first week from the first to the seventh, when they're kind of like restrictions or boundaries that are placed upon them, but in the meantime, they need to think big. They need to think in terms that they can do anything they darn well want to. But Aries got that kind of attitude anyway. And then we're in the home of Aries. So if Aries are smelling themselves, as my grandmother used to say, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. So calm down, Aries. Yes. And so it's a fire sign. It's a fire period for the new moon. And the Jupiter is going, which is a fire element. So that means that there might be this impulsiveness to just jump out there without looking. This, I'm telling you, with Mercury going retrograde on the first and the solar, the, uh, the solar, uh, the solar eclipse taking place on the eighth, this is not the time to just, just jump willy nilly out there before your butt looks, okay? Especially in the first week. So if you feel like you're hemmed in and you want to break away, just work with it. It's only the first seven days. But in that time, lay the foundation, lay the blueprint, lay the cornerstone to what you plan to do as you get past that. Because in the uh, second week, in the 8th through the 14th, when the moon is in your sign and the eclipse is taking place at that time too, this is a time when you should take uh, the time to really manifest, to really focus on what you want to do, focus on what you need to do, and all the things you expect to do in this case. Because... Jupiter's always, since it's transiting that, is the planet of good luck 
and prosperity and gains of chance. So I'm not talking about going to a roulette or casino. I'm talking about sometimes we got to take chances in the game of life. That would be the most important thing too. And around in the third week from the 15th to the 21st, this is when things are going to really begin to focus on your personal life, your home life, your personal appearance. So if you got this attitude about a whole new makeover, things like that, whether losing a pound or two because you done ate too much goodies and now you're feeling it on the, on the scale, okay, and you're seeing it in the mirror, all right? So this will be a good time. But you end the month off in a very reflective manner because actually in the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, the moon will be in your opposition sign of Libra. And so therefore, just think about what you want. Don't chase about it. Use the law of, of uh, attraction to think about what you want and allay all the things. But this is what, in summary what April is going to be. So for those uh, on the Pisces and uh, can, uh, Sagittarius, they are going to be the ones who will help Aries, believe it or not. And especially if they're born on the 3rd, the 12th, the 21st or the 30th of the month. The color to wear, although lavender isn't your, the best, uh, I mean, it isn't the most preferred choice for Aries, wear a hint of lavender in your clothing because colors have a way of attracting things to you. So the cycle that all Aries are going through says they should wear a hint of lavender in the mix, okay? For Tauruses, well, the theme for you is about manifestation making your dreams come true, seeing what it is you want, putting it here in the mind's eye or on a vision board, call it what you will. And it's, it's about doing the things that cause you to grow, to evolve, to reach a higher level. It's about being universal, global, international. If for those of you Tauruses who are narrow in your thinking, narrow in your attitude, narrow in the way you deal with people, you're going to have a very serious problem this particular month because the month is requiring you to do just the opposite, to expand, to embrace, to widen your horizons and consider the common humanity among all of us, regardless of what part of the human family we come from. And not only that, uh, you'll find, especially in the first week as you kick off the first seven days of April, that this whole attitude is to begin new but also to begin to put some things behind you too, because the cycle puts you in a position where you're in several positions. One, manifesting what you want. Two, letting go of what you need to let go that you've outgrown and no, no, no longer need anymore. And the ability to go and travel somewhere, especially in the opening days, uh, going somewhere new. Even if you've gone to the same place before, you'll find that you go to a different place. You know, people come to New York City and build the Empire State Building, but they don't come to New York City and say, oh, I've never visited the, the Statue of Liberty before. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. Now, the, the real interesting thing is going to be on the second week of the 8th through the 14th with the eclipse. Although the moon will be in your sign on the 10th and the 11th, it's going to be a kind of a contradictory type of thing. Because on one hand, the cycle you're in for May is assertive. But on the other hand, the week requires that you be more patient, that you be more diplomatic. Did you use a little finesse or, you know, a little panage in it? You know what I'm saying? And so, therefore, take it easy. So, on the 8th to the, excuse me, on the 10th and the 11th, it's going to be nice. But if you need to form a bond with people who are going in the same direction with you, it's be perfect. Now, in the third week, that's when things open up. I mean, things get really, really busy in the sense that you're going to be meeting contacts, uh, making those kind of connections that's going to take you to the next level. And it's also going to be a time where you're going to be at your creative best, your imaginative best, doing the things that you will, and you almost feel as if you're in your element, which makes sense because right around the corner, we're coming into your zodiac sign of Taurus. So that makes all the sense in the world. However, expect to hit the brakes around the 22nd, especially around the 24th and the 25th, when you say, okay, now I'm in Taurus, what the world is going on? Well, that's because the moon is in your opposition sign, okay, of Scorpio. And so it simply means take it easy. You're almost there. Just let these 48 hours pass and you will be fine. You will find that along the way that Aries and Scorpios and Leos will help you. 
this particular month, Tauruses, or people born on the 9th, the 18th, or the 27th. And although blue typically is the color for Taurus, it says wear a hint of red or yellow or crimson to kind of balance things, okay? Now, if your moon or sun or ascendant is in the sign of Gemini, and I should have said it for air. And by the way, although I didn't say it for the other signs, this means if your sun, your moon, and your ascendant is in there. So now, I knew there's a way. So if your sun or your moon or your sign is in the sign of Gemini, the theme this month for you is about achievement, recognition, doing things on a grand scale, setting no limits, allowing nobody to set a bar about this. You know how they talk about the glass ceilings? Well, that, that not, not for you, not this month. Break all that and go as high as your expectations and aspirations will take you. It's just that simple. This is the time where you're going to find that open, as you open the week, a lot of the dreams that you've been looking for, wanting to achieve on that way, has a way of beginning to manifest themselves. At the same time, those things that have been narrowing your achievements or blocking your achievements is going to be a perfect time to get rid of them. Because as you go into the 8th through the 14th, the second week, when a solar eclipse, excuse me, especially around the 12th and the 13th, several days after the 8th, you'll find that the moon will be sitting pretty in your sign of Gemini, which would then allow you to begin to start anew, start fresh, step out on your own. And don't be surprised if somebody talks to you about getting you a raise or promotion, okay? You know what I'm saying? So leave a comment down in the, in the comment section and see how we did. And so that you can expect. But in the third week, from the 15th to the 21st, it simply means slow down, take it easy, attend more to the nuts and bolts of your finances. What's coming in, what's going out, what you owe, and who owes you. And pay attention to all those things, all right? And then that's when things really begin to open up for you in a way that makes all the sense in the world. So expect to be quite busy. Expect to have an increase in your cash flow situation or the potential of your cash flow situation. Even if it's not coming in that week, you can see down the road that that puppy's coming and not, not in the not too distant future for you. It's going to be very fine. You will find that those under the signs of Capricorn and Aquarius and Libra will help you or those that are born on the 8th, the 17th or the 26th of the month. Now, color wise, Gemini's like glistening colors, metallic grays and stuff like that. But the cycle that you're going through this particular month says wear some darker colors like black and navy blue and things like that and mix that up into your wardrobe. That will help you. And especially for those that figure they put on a pound or two, they know psychologically darker colors make you look slimmer. So if you know you picked up a pound or two, don't be wearing no white up in there, okay, because it makes you look bigger. I'm just saying. That's all. But anyway, <laughs> just trying to help y'all out, okay? Anyway, cancers. If your sun or your moon or your ascendant is in the sign of cancer, the theme this month for April is opportunities from top to bottom, from beginning to end. Now, opportunities can be fleeting. Now, for you cancers, if y'all going to take your sweet time, okay, and think that, well, you know, when I get up off this couch, the opportunity is going to be knocking on my door. That's not what's happening. This this month for cancers, y'all got to be on the alert. Y'all got to be rock steady. Y'all got to be attentive. Y'all got to know what's going on. And especially in the very first week, because in the first week, the moon, the, the moon will be sitting in your opposition sign of Capricorn. All righty? And so not only that, from the first through the seventh, and then on the eighth, then it kicks in. And then April is not the, really the best month for your sign in the first place, too. So you're going to have a lot of things going on. So just pay attention to what opportunities that do present themselves. But romantically, financially, in the opening week, that looks good. Except in the first, second, and third day, the first three days, when the moon is in your stress sign, that just means just ride it out. However, in during the period of the retrograde, I mean, the solar eclipse is taking place on the 8th. You'll find in that new moon period that you will get a chance to reflect, which is perfect for what the solar eclipse requires anywhere. Prayer, meditation, refreshing, 
be thinking, doing things in a way that is very mindful to get more in touch with your spirit and a period of introspection, a period of soul searching, a period of self-analysis and beginning to question why you do the things you do is going to be very important. And you're likely to come up with some surprising answers that will make you more alert to opportunities when they do come your way. And this is especially so going into the third week of the 15th through the 21st when the moon is in your sign on the 14th and the 15th. Take advantage of it. All right. Be alert. You know what I'm saying? Keep, you know, if you got to put like some pins on your eyes and keep your eyes open so you don't go to sleep that 48 hours, that's what you got to do, all right, to take advantage of it. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I'm saying, okay? Don't be going to sleep, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't, see, that's why they say opportunities are fleeting. You think opportunities are going to say, I'm here. Do you see me? It don't work like that, okay? And then, and then this 21st century we live into, and as fast as, and people's attention span is like 30 seconds, okay? five seconds, it's like, skip, okay? So I'm just telling you, you're going to have to be alert, my cancer people, all right? Now, on the ninth, on the last end of it, it does indicate an opportunity to do some traveling. And in fact, it's indicated during the, the time of the lunar eclipse on the week of the 8th, too, which starts. Um, but, it want, but it indicates you want to be somewhere near water. Here on the tail end, it indicates a desire to maybe travel long distance or think in terms of widening your horizons or speaking to people from a long distance nature too. And so that will be very, very important. And you will find along the way, cancers, that Geminis and Virgos will help you. And that people that are born on the 5th, the 14th or the 23rd will be of help to you as well. And the colors to wear will be those kind of metallic grays and glistening colors. Although creams and greens and whites are normally assigned to you astrologically, throw a hint of shimmering colors in there, kind of liven things up there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that will help you a lot. Now, Leos. Okay. Leos, you're going to love this, okay? okay? For Leos, if your sun or your moon or your ascendant is in the sign of Leo, the theme is to be different. And who is more different than a Leo, okay? I mean, you're going to be right at home. Y'all going to be feeling yourselves, okay? Y'all going to say, what in the world is going on? You're going to be pitching yourself, okay? <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, I'm not kidding either. But the point, is, the point is, if you need to be different, if you need to think outside the box, if you need to be that visionary to set the new tone and attitude of where you're going, this is your month to do just that. And not only that, but Leo is a fire sign and you're in a fire month too? Man. They better, everybody and their mother better watch out. So if they so if they saying, girl, what has gotten into you? Or my man, what, what's up with that? That's what's up, okay? Now, let me tell you how it's going to jump off. The first week, a lot of activities. I need to breathe. Don't be sweating me. Don't be looking over my shoulder. Give me some, you know what I'm saying, especially on the job place. You know how you got some managers that micromanage? They're going to have problems with you in the very first week. I'm going to tell you right there. What you doing? Where you going? Where you doing? When you come in, they can do that, but they're going to get their feelings. So I can tell you straight up, that's not the way to go. And not only that, because the moon will be sitting in your opposition sign of Aquarius on the 4th and the 5th. That will only exacerbate the situation. So tell them that, look, y'all need to go listen to Manifest on Purpose, okay? To listen to the forecast, because it don't look pretty in the first week for you if you're sweating me, all right? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only, I'm only kidding. But anyway, anyway, but you know what I'm trying to tell you. But in the second week, though, when we're in the when it, the eighth through the fourteenth, when when the solar eclipse takes place on that eighth in the new moon, and you will be in a year where the week I should say where you got to make adjustments, and it's going to be challenging. So watch your weight. Watch how you deal with relationships. Watch how you deal with your finances. Things of that nature take it easy um but whatever we duties and responsibilities because don't forget at the same time mercury's going to be retrograde and so that means be careful of what you say and how you say it sometimes you got to say you can't say something that your mouth can't catch so to speak all right so it means you got to be very careful in your actions what you say and if you say it be persons of your word that's going to be to your benefit and especially with Mercury retrograde and then the eclipse taking place at the same time during that week, it's going to be a kind of a crazy week. 
but the style is about being different. That is the underlying thing to just make sure that whatever you do, you do it every way different than, than is regular, so to speak. All right. Um, as you go into the third week, though, it does indicate now you get a chance to breathe. Now you get a chance to take stock of your life. What are you doing? Why are you doing these things? You will begin. And also, don't don't be surprised if you come up with the most interesting dreams of waking up and say, what was that about? It was so different. I mean, I know you like to be different, but that's just absurd. OK, those kind of things. And so because you'll be in a week that governs the law of attraction, and it's all, especially in the week of the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th, when the moon is in your sign, that's when whatever you're manifesting is likely to occur. Just involve your five senses of taste, touch, smell, sound, hear. Involve those in it. And what you're envisioning is likely to manifest. So it's going to be a very, very important week, despite the fact that you got two things going on, which is Mercury retrograde and the solar eclipse that's taking place. Because although it's 20, 68 minutes, the ripple effect, you know what it's like? It's like throwing a, a, a stone in the middle of a pond and then the ripple effects comes out to the shore. So for those that have had that experience, it ain't just like, oh, it's one day and the next day is like, you know, I'm back to routine. Don't forget, these things have a ripple effect that goes throughout until it reaches the shore. So this is what I'm saying you need to be careful of. In the last week, money and relationships is written all over the sign of that. Also, pregnancies, giving birth to ideas and plans and projects and things of that nature, especially around the 26th or the last Saturday of the month. But that's going to be a very, very good time for you. So think outside the box. Don't follow the crowd. But then again, that's why Leos are always number one. The first person to land on the moon was a Leo. The first person to reach the North Pole was a Leo. The first African-American president, and the way it looks politically, the only one, <laughs> it's going to be no time soon, was a Leo. So Leos are very different, very unique, and you couldn't have been in a better space to bring that out in yourself, all right? Just be different, think outside the box, and you'll find that you'll be right at home. Now, Aquarians will help you, other Leos will help you, and the minor way Geminis will help you, as well as those that are born on the 1st or the 4th, the 10th or the 13th, the 19th, 22nd, 28th, or 31st of the month, or, um, and the colors. Now, normally with Leos, they are into those reds and yellows and things that are very vibrant. But the number, the cycle you're in says wear colors that are kind of vibrant. Like um, if you've ever seen Haitian art, the, the colors like just pop out. You know what I'm saying? It's like iridescent blues and greens and pinks and whites and stuff like that. Because yes, there are different shades of whites and different shades of cream. There are literally billions of colors on the planet. Now, that's how much of an art form they've got this too. So it's, yes, the basic seven colors for the nine, for the 12 signs, but then there are different shades from the lightest to the darkest. So keep that in mind. Well, Virgos, what is the theme? The theme for you, Virgo, is about treasure. Is it buried? Or are you looking for it? Or are you in search of it? Because if so, this is the time to find the treasure of your choice. It's just a matter of how persistent you are and how deep you're willing to go. Like, let's say you're looking for gold or diamonds. You think it's going to be right there on the surface where you just got to kick it? I don't think so. You're going to have to dig and dig and dig and dig. But is it worth it? Oh, yes. And it's so interesting because since you are an earth sign and you got to go for gold or diamonds in the earth, this is your time to do just that. And you're going to find that in the first week that a lot of the things that you've been searching for are likely to come to the surface in that way. So what I'm saying is look for the treasures of your choice. Look for the things that you want to search and seek and find that you want to add to your treasure chest, so to speak. OK, and you'll find that in that first week, a lot of things will begin to wrap things up where you say, okay, I need to get this out the way so you can move forward with some of the things that you want to make your reality, okay? In the second week, though, of the week of the 8th and the 9th, when Mercury goes retrograde, I mean, when there's a solar eclipse, excuse me, because don't forget, Mercury's going to be retrograde up until about the 21st, 24th anyway. But what I'm saying is that 
in the eighth and the ninth, when the moon is in your opposition sign of Pisces. And because we're just leaving the sign of the new moon day of solar eclipse, you have to be extremely, extremely careful. And don't be pushy because you'll be in a cycle where it says, this is the week to assert yourself, but don't assert yourself that you're out of a job, that you're out of a relationship, that you're out of opportunities. Timing is very important, especially with, and see, because of the first two weeks, you'll be feeling yourself. You'll have this confidence about you. It would almost appear to be cocky or arrogant, but because Mercury's retrograde, the tendency is to misread the signals. Well, I'm just standing up for myself. Well, I thought you was trying to boss me around. You see, so those kinds of things, you just have to be mindful of your approach. Yes, be tactful. Yes, be assertive, but be tactful about it. Don't be overbearing or over pushing. You'll find you'll do well. Now, in the, in the third week of the 15th through the 21st, especially in the 19th and the 20th, when the moon is in your sign, then you can get more of the things you want. Then you can manifest those things and try to join up with some member of the opposite sex, a boy to a girl, a girl to a boy, in terms of going somewhere in the same direction you want to go. It's about partnering. It's about getting the right mindset to move to the next level and do the things you want to do. And then you'll find in the third week that things will really begin to expand and open up. And it's going to be a busy, busy conclusion to the month of April, that's for sure. And if there's been any legal or semi-legal matters, that is going to be addressed successfully as well. You will find that those under the signs of Capricorn, those under the sign of Aquarius and Libras will help you, or if they're born on the 8th, the 17th or the 26th, they will assist you as well. Now, normally Virgos wear light colors. This particular month, it suggested you wear the darker colors, the black and the navy blues and the deep blacks and stuff like that. So even if you're wearing a light color garment, add a darkness to it too, to kind of add a little contrast that will help you as well, okay? Now, if your sun or moon or ascendant is in the sign of Libra, the theme for April, I can tell Mercury's retrograde already, is about endings. So it ain't going to be pretty for somebody because Libras are normally very nice, you know. Libra rules the scale. Normally they like to be about balance and beauty and, you know, hum harmony. Well, in this particular month, y'all might be a little disruptive. And let me tell you why. First of all, this period of the month is your opposition sign. The opposition sign for Libra is Aries. The opposition sign for Aries is Libra. So you happen to be at the dead bottom of the astrological curve. Not only that, but with Mercury being retrograde and this solar eclipse taking place on the 8th, you got to really, really be careful what you terminate, how you terminate, and the consequences of you terminating something. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds, but I'm trying to tell you that if right now things just got kind of crazy. You ain't crazy. It's just the conditions of the cosmos that makes it appear crazy. That's all I'm saying to you, all right? So so at first, you're going to kick it out where I ain't got to take this from you. Lloyd, you don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do it my way. You may do it your way, but don't forget, every decision we make has a consequence. And what you want to do, and since you're in a cycle that's about endings, is not start a consequence that will cascade itself throughout the balance of the month. That makes no sense to me, okay? So what happens is, and then because it'll be, you're in the sign of Capricorn and on the day of the solar eclipse on the eighth and the new moon on the eighth and the ninth, when it's in your opposition sign too, so the sun and the moon will be both in your opposition sign at the same time. I'd really take it easy. I keep my butt home. Don't eat, don't, you know, you know, for say 68 minutes from 2.30 something to 3.33 from Texas to Maine, just eat early, eat late, stay in prayer, stay in meditation. Try not to go out and drive, okay? Especially you speeders. Those of you who are used to speeding and whatnot, this is not the best way to handle that. You take it easy. Now, I don't mean to sound like doom and gloom, but I'm just telling you how the cosmos works. So for you, Libra, you will be at the bottom of the scale. And then with the moon in opposition to on the day of the eclipse as well, you need that like a hole in the head. So take it easy. It's simple. And again, it can't be said you didn't have this conversation here. 
Okay, that's the point. That's why we do this because we're gonna help a brother and a sister out. That's what we're gonna do. All righty. So, but in the third week though, things will be more to your liking. That's when you can like be more creative. You'll feel more expansive. You can you can kind of bring your harvest to market in terms of things you want to do and get out there before the public and whatnot. You will do very very well then. Don't forget Mercury is still in retrograde, so be careful how you say say things when you say it and whatnot, and speak with the right intentions. You know, manners are magic. And if you use that, Libra, you will weather the storm. But if it seems like this is a kind of a crazy time where none of this makes sense, that's because Mercury is retrograde, and you got a solar eclipse going on at the same time that both have a ripple effect, not just for a day, but for like days and weeks. So if you keep that in mind, you'll, you'll be very easy with yourself. Now you'll find around the 21st, the 22nd to 23rd as you go into the tail end, not only will you be more in point of getting your act together and having a plan of what you're going to do, but you have a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, a sense of focus, a blueprint to getting from point A to point B, which makes all the difference in the world. But trying to wing it, trying to fly by the seat of your pants, uh, you'll need to listen to this again. That's all I'm saying, if that's the case. All right. Now, you will find. That Aries and Scorpios, yes, I said Aries. I know you said I'm supposed to leave them alone, but somewhere they're going to be of help to you too. So be open. Aries, Scorpio, Leos, and people born on the 9th, the 18th, or the 27th, they're going to help you as well. And now, because your sign normally rules blue, wear a hint of red in it, okay? Because of the influence of the cycle that you're going through. And you will find that things will be good, all right? Now, for Scorpios. If your sun, your moon, or your center is in the sign of Scorpio, the theme this month is about creativity, using your imagination, beginning to think in terms of adding color and flavor to what you're doing, how to be more expressive, how to be more entertaining, how to be more expansive in how you articulate the things you want. If any time you need to express what's in your heart, but in your mind, what you're feeling, you couldn't have picked a better month to do so than this time of the year for April of 2024. Although it may not be like that in the first week, you might feel like you were like restricted in terms of how you're able to articulate or kind of bound in terms of how you wish to get your feelings across. But that's because you need to make sure that you got all your ducks in a row. So when you do open your mouth and you do open your heart and you do open your mind, you can express it in a way that everybody on the other side listening to you can understand. I see what you're saying. Okay. So it does mean in the first week to get everything together. Don't forget Mercury's going to be retrograde. So don't assume, make sure you have a plan. Just don't, uh, just don't step out there on a whim and on a dare because Scorpio is a fixed sign and they're just as daring as their counterpart of very sometimes, but this would not be the time because Scorpio rules the emotions. So don't let the emotions run wild with you. Make sure that you make sure you keep your emotions in check, which sometimes are not always easy for Scorpio because they're a fixed sign anyway. And then especially, especially Scorpio, because on that day, on the 10th and the 11th, when the moon moves from Aries into the sign of Taurus, your opposition sign, that's going to, so that's going to be a kind of a crazy period too. So be careful of how you speak, how you write, how you travel, make sure and then with Mercury retrograde, by the way, get to appointments on time. Don't say, well, I'll be there in 15 minutes. And then just happens there's a car that flipped over and it done tied up traffic about two hours. And your 15 minutes done turned to two hours and 15 minutes and you done lost the opportunity. So leave ahead of time. Do things well in advance. Just don't wait to the last minute. Well, you know what I mean? Don't do that. Not with those occurrences, the retrograde and the solar eclipse happening at the same time. Is it occurring when the moon is in your opposition sign to a Taurus? Mm, that's not good. But what is great, though, is going into the third week where you're into your love and romance cycle, your romance and your finance cycle. That's when things really begin to say, ah, now this is more to my liking. It's about time. And you will find that it will be very nice, too. So if you've been nice with people along the way, you'll find that financially you'll be blessed. And if you've been kind in your relationships with family, 
personal or intimate, you'll find that there will be more than compensation coming your way. It will be more than worth it. All you got to do is just be patient. See, we live in an instant. We live in a world of just instant gratification. Just push a button, and if it don't respond, we keep pushing, 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 pushing. Well, in the cosmos, it don't work like that. In the cosmos, there's a very slow process. But if you're patient enough, you will be more than vindicated, more than justified in that process. And so that's what will happen. And so around the 24th and the 25th, as you go into the final phase, as we begin to move into late April into May. You'll find, and then by that way, and the reason why I say that, because the moon will be in your sign of Scorpio. And so then you'll be in a time to really think and reflect. And so to get what you want, simply manifest it by seeing on the mental screen of your mind. It's just that simple. You will find along the way that Sagittarians and Pisces will help you, or if they're born on the 3rd, the 12th, the 21st, or the 30th of the month, they will be of help to you as well. Now, since Scorpio originally is ruled by Mars and it governs things in the kind of red family, orange, yellow family, this time, because of the cycle you're using, use the color of lavender, purple, mauve, call it what you will. Don't forget they're all shades of lavender, purple, and mauve from the lightest to the darkest. So get the color that matches your thing and fit that in and you'll find, because see, colors hate and attracting luck. In fact, I need to hold, do a whole peace on colors just by itself. But you'll find that you will do very, very well as you close out the month. Sagittarius. Well, Sagittarius, if your sun or your moon or your ascendant is in the sign of Sagittarius, the theme word for you is commitment. Can you spell it? Okay. Because normally Sagittarius are free spirits. <laughs> but this month, Sagittarius says, you're going to have to commit yourself. You're going to have to stick by what you say and follow through what you promise. And sometimes that's not always easy. This is why the greatest comedians are always in the sign of Sagittarius, especially in December. The latter part of November, like Rodney Dangerfield, but mostly in December, like Rick Fox and Flip Wilson and Richard Pryor and Sam Kennison, all in Sagittarius, to name a few. And so therefore, yes, it's a fun time, but yet it's gonna be a time where you got to handle your business. You got to attend to family. You got to attend to obligations. You got to meet your objectives wherever they may be. And so, yes, it's nice about having fun. But the point for this particular April says about handling your business, and especially, especially since there's all this cosmic dynamics going on with the Mercury retrograde and the solar eclipse taking place on the 8th. You can't fool around. I will say this, though, and especially in that second week of the April 14th, because several days after the eclipse on the 8th, the 12th and the 13th, when the moon is sitting in your opposition sign of Gemini, it's going to be very, very problematic. So you can't say, you know what I mean? That's not, the, anytime Mercury's retrograde, that's the wrong thing. Well, I assume, I, well, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. And especially since the moon is in your opposition sign then at that time, with the solar eclipse just taking place days after, and, and especially contractual types of matters too. Try not to get into over things that's over your head. Try to maybe keep your head above water. Make sure you can see the shore from the, from the water that you're in and make sure you can get back there and take your time. Uh, you'll find though that it's in the third week around about the third Tuesday, somewhere around about the 18th, that things can be working out better for you because it means now you're in a position to manifest what you want. Now you're in a position, in fact, there's a strong possibility of some long distance travel or somebody traveling long distance to see you because it governs the period that governs your sign, which is the ninth house. The ninth house, which governs the sign of Sagittarius, deal with foreigners, foreign countries, foreign languages, and also some traveling and stuff like that. So you'll be in a very good position during that third week to make those things manifest for you. But again, the whole thing is about commitment. Don't say something that you can't follow through and don't promise something that you can't do. As they say, actions speak louder than words. And as the elders used to say, you can show me better than you can tell me, okay? And if you keep that in mind, you should get through April pretty nicely. Plus it's a fire element that's comfortable too. It's just that you got all that drama going on with the dynamics of the Mercury retrograde and the solar, solar eclipse taking place on the 20th. 
after the week, after the last week, then you can put all those commitments into motion, especially around the 26th, 27th, 28th, when you're in a great position, when the moon is literally sitting in your sign. I know you said, man, it's at the end of the month. I'd rather come at the end of the month than no time at all. Okay, so you got your choice about that. We ain't got nothing to do with controlling these, the way the heavens are moving in the stars. Okay, I ain't, don't, don't be looking at me. I'm just saying, if you look at your moon book, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, the moon will be sitting there and it will give you a chance to close that month out on a very good note of April. You will find that Tauruses will help you, Libans will help you, and people born on the 6th, the 15th, and the 24th will help you. And although lavender, although Sagittarius lean toward the color lavender, the cycle you're in for this particular month says you need to include a hint of blue in your wardrobe as well, too. Now, if your sun or moon or ascendant is in the sign of Capricorn, the theme this month is patience. Well, normally, Capricorn, to your benefit, you're known to have a lot of patience. When you want something, and don't forget, it's an earth sign, so they can prod along. So you're kind of in your element. And when I say that, this is going to be the time to kind of like plant the seeds that you want to grow and harvest after time, after, well, it's actually seeds first, then time, then harvest, which you'll probably have by the end of the month. But you'll find that for you, um, that especially with the first, the second, and the third, when the moon is actually sitting in your sign of Capricorn in the opening days of uh, Aries, when we go into Mercury retrograde at the same time. So it's going to be kind of contradictory. So in the first, it goes retrograde, but in the first, second, and third, the moon will be sitting in your sign. So therefore, you can start out pretty good, but don't go too, too fast. Be patient, as it were. That's the whole thing. Just because you were just like, man, this is good. Let me just, just knock everybody over. Just be patient, be diplomatic, be considerate of other people. Use acts of kindness. That's what will get you through. And especially during the 8th, because the 8th through the 14th, that second week when Mercury go, I should say when the, there's a total eclipse on the 8th, and which will have a ripple effect for the next couple of days, it simply means just have some boundaries, set some borders for yourself, be patient, stay at home. Again, some of the do's is stay at home, be prayerful, be mindful, uh, try not to eat. You know, try not to drink no water. I will get back to you with why that is. See, I like to go down the rabbit hole. Why can't I eat? Because, see, you know you're going to have some rebellious Capricorns out there that says, I can't eat. Well, I'm going to eat anything I want to. And then if you have to wind up with some indigestion, you should have followed it a far too because I can tell you why you shouldn't have ate. So they said that. Anyway, anyway, uh, that's how I see that. So have patience. You will find, though, that in the third week you will have a chance to travel, but be careful. There's a couple of things because Mercury governs travel. Mercury is in retrograde. You'll be in a travel week and the sun will be in your opposition side of cancer on the 14th and the 15th. So if you've got plans to travel, you make sure you double check everything. Don't assume. Don't rush out and you left your tickets on the dresser. Don't, you know, nowadays they put it on your phone, but you know what I'm saying. Make sure you just double check everything. The best week for you during this entire month will be in the final week when you're in your romance and finance cycle. And not only that, the moon will be in your sign on the 29th and the 30th of the month. So in those last two days, as you end the month, you're going to end it off with what you call sweet. Okay. So have a plan. Make sure you enjoy yourself. Uh, relax. Take it easy. And expect some money to come your way. You know, uh, at this time, the last time I heard, I don't know how it's going to be, but the last time I heard, the lottery was $1.9 billion, okay? Maybe throw a little lottery up in there. And if you win, y'all need to give us a call, okay? Because y'all heard it here first, all right? That, that, thank you, thank you. No, two calls, okay? That's what they need to do. Um, but it's going to be good. So I would expect there to be on around that last Friday, somewhere starting around the 24th for things to really work out, but especially on the 29th and the 30th, the last two days of the month, when the moon is literally sitting in your sign. Aquarius, all right, if your sun or your moon or your ascendant is in the sign of Aquarius, the theme is about reflection. Isn't that interesting? Now, what do I mean by reflection? 
I'm not me looking at yourself in the mirror when you get up in the morning. I'm talking about reflecting in terms of why are you here? That's what's going to happen to you. Why am I going through all of this? Why are these things happening in my life? You begin to question anyone and everyone that's coming through your space. It's nothing personal. The people you love, the people you don't like, uh, any, whoever it is, who's ever been on your radar, you're going to be doing a checklist of why am I dealing with you? Why do I need to deal with you? And when do I need to stop dealing with you? It's those kind of things. So because you are governing in a cycle for April, which deals with the law of attraction, chasing is not the way to go. One famous podcaster I enjoy uh, once explained to me, when you are chasing after something, maybe it's trying to run away from you. And so that's how it applies in your nature for you, Aquarius. So don't chase, just simply, okay, this is what I want. Just sit still and meditate. And it's going to be very important because part of the solar eclipse is best to meditate or stay in prayer anyway. And meditate. For those of you who haven't meditated, get into meditation. Uh, learn how to get in touch with your inner self. I think Wayne Dwyer says, uh, when you meditate, you're talking to God. But when you, it's your intuition, God is talking to you. That kind of thing that I heard. Y'all got to listen to this podcast. And she's just absolutely awesome. But anyway, um, but that's the approach y'all need to do. Now, in the opening week, from the 4th and the 5th, when the moon is sitting in your sign, things are looking good. But don't forget, Mercury is retrograde. So don't assume in that period, and it's going to, Mercury always stays retrograde for 21 days. So, and it then overlaps into the solar eclipse that's taking place on the 8th. So it just means be mindful. And especially in the second week, because you'll be going through a Mars transit. And that simply means impulsiveness, you need to cut down it. Because Aquarians can be impulsive anyway. Aquarians are known to be rebellious. I, I, I ain't telling you how I know. I'm just saying Aquarians... You tell them to do this, they do that. You say, why? They say, why not? And I'm saying, that's not the attitude to use as you go into the second week. Not let you want to get your feelings hurt, but it can't be said you didn't hear it at first, okay? <laughs> anyway, I'm an Aquarius. That's why I'm telling you, and I know how I can be. So for us Aquarians, I know how we can be. So we enter that second week, slow your rough about how you say things, about how you drive. Don't be rushing and all that stuff. Take your time. Take your time. The world is the world's going to be here tomorrow, okay? It's going to be here for 100 years from now, I pray, if men don't blow themselves the kingdom come with their egos. But it's going to be a time where it's about really reflecting, really getting into why you are, what does it all mean, the people in your life, how are they fitting into your life and what part have they been playing, so to speak. But it does indicate a trip is indicated, some type of travel is indicated at that time. And so what happens is the week of the 15th through the 21st, when the moon is in your opposition sign on the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th, when it's in the sign of Leo, it simply means that is the time even more so to kind of like lay back, don't rush, don't force, don't push anything, just kind of, as they say, go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? It's like going against the tide. Nobody goes against the tide and win. Uh, that's a given. But if you go with the tide and go with the flow, you'll find that life will be much better for you. And then as you end the month of April, you'll find that you'll be in a very visionary position. You're going to have these great ideas, these visions, strange dreams, or you need to have a notepad or something to take some serious notes because you'll be waiting at a bus stop or waiting for somebody. And you know what I'm saying? You get these ideas and just jot them down or say them on your phone or whatever, if you know how to use your phone and your notes. And uh, that will do. Now, you'll find that in your case, that those under the signs of uh, uh, cancer and Pisces, or if they're born on the 2nd or the 7th, the 11th or the 16th, the 20th, the 25th, or the 29th of the month, they will be of help to you in some way, shape, or form. The color you should wear is green, like I got on, okay? And it's April. So I'm starting off right away on a good note, okay? Just coincident. And a little bit of white, too. All right? Um, normally, the, 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 normally um, Aquarians rule iridescent colors, things like that. Some Something that's very different to say, well, that's all that unique. Saving the best for last. I know Pisces says, man, you, you know, you've been talking. 
and you finally get to me, you better be glad. Anyway, if your sun or your moon or your sun is in the sign of Pisces, the theme for you this month is about family. It's almost a forgotten word. But family is going to mean a whole lot to you more than anything this month, Pisces. I mean it seriously. So if you think you can do it alone, you're going to find you're going to be stranded out there all by your pretty self, your lonely self. But if you embrace family and connect to family, it will be to your advantage this particular month. You know, in other countries, they seem to be more in the family. There's something happening now. It's, 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 not about, it's not about family. It's about how much you can go for yourself. But the theme for you, the theme for you, and especially with Mercury going retrograde on the first and that solar eclipse taking place, family may be the last thing you got at the end of the day. So it's very, very important that you do that. So especially on the 6th and the 7th in that first week, because the moon will be in your sign of Pisces. So take advantage, form those bonds. You know, instead of being spiteful and you don't like your sister or you don't like your brother because they did something 20 years ago, forgive. It's about family. Okay. Your mother spanked you and you know good and well you deserve that and you ain't forgive your mother, forgive her. Your father cursed you out and said, no, you got to go out on your own because he wasn't putting your thing and he's trying to make you independent. Forgive them. It's about family. It's about forgiveness. And this is going to be very, very important, especially with all this going on in the heavens in the month of April with the retrograde and the solar eclipse. This is the time to stay in a state of meditation and prayer, and in your case, forgiveness. Now, you're going to find in the second week when the eclipse actually takes place on the 8th, that that's going to be a time when you're going to, sort of like you're going to come of age, sort of like you're going to really, really reach that level where you really understand what family is about, what unity is about, and what role you've been playing in the family in your life, whether they're your brothers or sisters, your nieces or nephews, your cousins, your siblings, your grandparents, whatever the case is. But the whole thing, don't forget, is about family or ancestors. Call it what you will. Or about legacies, leaving with something that you want. But those will be the things. And the ninth, though, I mean, in the third week, when you go through the week of the 19th, well, the day of the 19th and the 20th, when the moon is in your opposition sign of Virgo, that may be a bit challenging. And then don't forget, we, we definitely Mercury retrograde is just about to wrap it up. So that means just be patient and be careful of how you say things and how you commit yourself because the cycle you're in is not only about family, but the cycle is also about commitment in terms of what you say and what you do. You cannot be willy nilly. You cannot speak out of one end of your mouth and you're not handling your business. This is going to be very, very important especially in that third week on the 19th and the 20th when the moon is sitting in your direct opposition sign. That's going to blow all your cover because retrograde has a way of thinking, bringing things to the surface too. So you got to be clear. You got to be correct. And with the, the solar eclipse talking about those things too, it would be in your advantage to just, just be straight ahead, okay? Um, but you close out the month of April as you go into May on a note where you feel more independent you feel more self-reliant. You get a, it's like a breath of fresh air where now you feel, now you can make a fresh start with yourself. And you're absolutely right. Especially in the last Sunday around the 28th of the month, you're going to do very, very well. And this is a time where you can step out on faith. This is a time where you like to get a raise or promotion. So don't be surprised and drop us a comment in the comment line about what you did or we don't know what we're talking about. Well, it ain't, I ain't going to drag Kimberly into this. Lloyd Strayhorn is running his mouth with this, so she ain't got nothing to do with this, okay? Anyway, the people that are likely to help you will be Libras and Taurus, or people born on the 6th to 15th or the 24th of the month. And the color to wear, although Pisces love their lavender, blue should be added to the equation as well. So that's a wrap up. I know it's, I know it's been so long, but, you know, listen, I'm doing the best I can. I want to let you know that I appreciate you because a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the scenes. I happen to know that you research everything. And today, as I'm listening to the forecast by Zodiac sign, 
it's just so brilliant. I could see like the whole vision of how everything just comes together. Not only do you tell us about our zodiac sign, the theme we can expect for the entire month, you go week by week telling us about what we can expect from finances, um, relationships, uh, what can we expect from anything. And then you've been adding components along the way. Like last time, you let us know who's going to help us out. And this time, which was really fun, you told us about the colors. And I like how this time you blended it all in with this cosmic mix we got going on for the month of April. So you didn't just give us a forecast for our zodiac sign for the month of April. You pretty much gave us how we should carry ourselves around this eclipse season, how we should carry ourselves during this mer Mercury retrograde. And I know that this is not something that you wrote down in about 10 minutes or 15 minutes. This is something that you put your time into. You were dedicated. And I appreciate that you are sharing it right here with us. Well, so I must have given so this. The theme part actually came from you. That's how I got an idea that from now, <clears throat> from now on, each month, each sign will have a theme. And the theme is what kind of leads me more into it. It's, it's, it's really a nice concept you came up with. And you didn't know it. You didn't know it. But you, you said something about a theme, and it's been that way and will be that way. There will always be a theme or a header, somewhat like when people look at a TikTok or Instagram or whatever the case is, there's a, a theme above that kind of kind of segue into it. So that I got from you. And before I close, I want to say I need to thank you very much for sponsoring my Live with Lloyd show that's seen every Monday and every Wednesday live on um, Live with Lloyd. It's on my YouTube YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called uh, Numbers in You. This aired every Monday and Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. And um, I, I really want to thank you for sponsoring it. And then thank you for letting me sponsor my show. My, my forecast is on your show. So it's, it's very, very nice. And I'm telling you, uh, I have become very partial to this young lady. And if it sounds like I'm partial, yes, I am partial uh, to her because it's one of the things I, I've even taken words from her, like the God of me loves the God in you. I put that on my show because for me, you know, in the Bible, they said we're made in God's image. I think we all understand that. So if we're made in God's image, that means all of us are made in God's image. So when she says the God in me loves the God in you, I could relate to that. And I took it. I, and I gave her, I gave her credit. To, I said, I'm taking that stuff. And I will say to my viewers, the God in me loves the God in you. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. And thank you for coming back. I'll see you in this month. This year is going by so fast. So yeah. we'll see each other. And I got another surprise for May too, but I ain't going to tell you. They're going to have to tune in to find out. Can I have a hint? No. <laughs> I'm only joking. You, hear that? you gotta come back in May, everybody. I'm only joking. It's something that one wears or carries. How's that? Say that again. It's what one either wears or carries. Don't say it. <laughs> okay. I'll try not to. Believe me. <laughs> Oh, and for you who think I'm going to talk about, leave a comment in the comment section. I bet you. What is the answer? I'll be thinking about that till the end of the night. Sometimes. Well, then there ain't no fun for May. You <laughs> need them to come back for May. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure some people already figured out you either wear it or you carry it. Wear it or carry it. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll think about it. You figured it out already. I can tell. <laughs> Listen, thank, thank you. you the so God in me loves the God in you, Kimberly. Thank you. The so God in me loves the God <laughs> in you. Have a good day. Thank you. And listen, seriously, for real, for you, smart Alex, don't be looking at the total solar eclipse on the eighth. This is no joke. I mean, not unless you want to go to your eye doctor, not unless you want to possibly lose your vision. 
um, at some point there are, I, I think they're going to be some images of glasses. They got Eclipse glasses. You can go to Amazon or other places and order these glasses. Uh, they should be IOS certified, which is ophthalmologist certification. And the, uh, the certification number is 12312-2. That way you got the official ones because they do sell, like they sell fake gold bars, fake diamonds. They sell fake, fake glasses too. And the last thing you want to do is be looking up there with some glasses you know you, you ain't supposed to have on, and then you want to know why you can't read your name at the end of the day. Thank you. The 3D glasses. <laughs> you remember the 3D glasses? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, why was one red and one was blue? You know what I mean? <laughs> I never understood that. That was no technicolor. That was just two colors, didn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. I enjoy putting this lecture together. And let me say this for you who are watching this. I hope you are too. And I try to make it fun, but at the fun of it, I am very, very serious. I'm very serious. Do take care of yourselves. Thank you. Enjoy your April. I will. I will. You too.